Few things are more heartbreaking than unfulfilled potential. There is no pain like looking back on your life or the life of someone you love and lamenting on all that could have been. Travis Meeks is the musician who embodies those feelings for me. Unlike Scott Weiland or Lane Staley, the cemented contributions of Travis Meeks are very limited. Despite this, Meeks irrefutably remains one of the most unique musicians to emerge from his era. In this video, we will explore the musical history of Travis Meeks, his subsequent downfall, and how Days of the New bridge the worlds of grunge and post-grunge. Days of the New's origins can be traced back to Louisville, Kentucky, with a teenager and his guitar. Travis Meeks began writing the material for the self-titled Days of the New album at the age of 15. Meeks was in a heavy metal trio named Dead Reckoning. While Dead Reckoning played its genre very well, taking influence from such bands as Metallica and Pantera, Meeks felt the need to broaden his sound to something more versatile. Initially referring to this expansion as an acoustic project, Meeks dubbed it Days of the New World Order. After some pushback and criticism from fellow bandmate Jesse Vest, this was shortened to Days of the New. Shortly after, Meeks commenced writing for what would be the debut album. Despite his age, Meeks wrote as someone wise beyond his years, drawing inspiration from aspects of life most teenagers did not think about. One such example is the song Shelf in the Room, a track which pertains to Meeks' Asperger's syndrome, emphasizing his need for routine and consistency. After a live performance with his Dead Reckoning bandmates Jesse Vest and Matt Tall, Days of the New was offered to be signed to a label, the acoustic performances standing out to a label scout in the audience. The band was signed to Outpost Recordings, and studio work on the debut would soon commence. Guitarist Todd Whitener was recruited to round out the lineup and Days of the New was ready to go public. Three singles were released off the debut album, Touch Peel and Stan, The Downtown, and Shelf in the Room. All charted well in rock radio and the band almost instantaneously found strong standing. A tour opening for Metallica and Jerry Cantrell soon boosted the debut album in the platinum status, and Days of the New became one of the more successful artists following the new wave of post-grunge bands. This also provided financial security for the members of Days of the New, who were all teenagers at the time of this success. However, the success began to overwhelm Meeks, who was frustrated at the public perception of Days of the New. The idea that Whitener, Vest, and Tall contributed creatively to the debut album notably upset Meeks. Band violence between Meeks and the other members became commonplace, and soon Meeks began traveling on his own bus away from Whitener, Vest, and Tall. Eventually, Whitener and Vest departed from Days of the New. An attempt to keep Tall around for the subsequent album was made, however Tall only performed on two songs before personal differences interfered and he too left Days of the New. Though Meeks would publicly insult the former members of Days of the New frequently in interviews, he always thanked them in the liner notes for his two follow-up albums. With Whitener, Vest, and Tall gone, Meeks can now commit to his true vision of Days of the New. This vision began with Green, a drastic departure from the Alice in Chains styled acoustic grunge on the debut. Green incorporated elements from world music, notably Celtic influences. The album also featured codas, with every track seamlessly flowing into the next. Green was a unique leap in that the album bears almost no influence from the grunge era of the time, while also staying true to the acoustic elements that define Days of the New. Meeks also added elements which helped transcend the music to his vision featuring orchestral arrangements, a choir, and female vocals from pop star Nicole Schwarzinger. It should also be stressed that Meeks composed this album at the age of 19. Though Green did not reach the platinum status of the debut, it still found some commercial success, with singles Enemy and Weapon in the Wound propelling it to a gold certification. A two-month tour as a seven-piece band featuring Schwarzinger occurred. However, this tour marked what would be the beginning of the end of Meeks' career. Shortly after the second month concluded, Meeks developed a kidney stone and became addicted to the pain medication he was prescribed for it. The consequence for this would only snowball with each subsequent year. 
Nix's creativity was only expanding, and he wanted to carry Days of the New into boundaries few bounds of the era were exploring. The follow-up to Green would be the Red Album, which incorporated heavy themes of orchestral music, with Meeks emphasizing an influence of Phantom of the Opera on the album. The album in its original form features a theatrical atmosphere, as though the listener were in the presence of a live performance. The codas remain, giving the album that same storytelling aspect that was present on Green. The album showed the wide range Meeks possessed, and alongside music released by Stone Temple Pilots and Silverchair, showed that Days of the New were also capable of expanding beyond the standard post-grunge their detractors boxed them into. However, just as the album was completed and ready for release, Meeks was stopped by his record label. He was told to remix every track on the album, rearrange the track listing, and swap three songs with three more radio-friendly tracks to guarantee some sort of commercial success. This news greatly offended Meeks but the options were to either follow the label's demands or have Red shelved and never to be released. Meeks chose to remix the album, and though the album does have a polished sound more in line with the popular post-grunge bands of the time, it does retain the artistic elements that define Days of the New, with the codas remaining. By no means does the album stand out as an outlier in their discography, and to date sounds less commercially appealing than the debut album. Amidst this time, Meeks' addiction from the pain medication he took during the Green Tour progressed to crack cocaine. The Red Album was released a poor commercial performance, effectively negating the goals of remixing the album. However, Meeks was 21 years old and had just released three interesting and genre-expanding albums. The tour with Creed, the most successful post-grunge band in the world, began shortly after and would raise exposure for Red. However, after this tour, Meeks would develop what would become the worst addiction of his life. By 2002, Meeks had progressed from crack to meth addiction. Meeks' creative inspiration remained strong despite this latest vice, with several projects for a follow-up to Red Brewing. One of the most notable was Meeks auditioning for what would later become Velvet Revolver in 2002. Meeks recorded four songs with Slash, Duff McKagan, and Matt Sorum before they selected Scott Weiland in his place. Nevertheless, Meeks pressed onwards. One other project he had in mind included a second supergroup, this group being called Not of This World, which was a drastic departure from the acoustic experimental sound of Days of the New, focusing more on Pantera-styled heavy metal. Not of This World was notable in that it featured Meeks primarily as a guitar player, with David Saylor Bryant handling lead vocals for the band. Musically, Not of This World was a callback to his original sound on Dead Reckoning. A movie being written by Meeks, as well as its accompanying soundtrack, was also in the works. Lastly, and most importantly, the follow-up to Red was being written by Meeks. The latest color was set to be purple, and supposedly borrowed influences from the debut album, but with an added element of jazz instruments to the record. However, the recording of Purple was interrupted by Meeks entering rehab for his meth addiction. Meeks' stay at rehab was only to last a month, and upon its completion, he began to book dates for a solo tour. An entire solo tour was prepared, and Purple was still tentatively remained for a release later in 2003. However, Days of the New was soon released from their record label, and plans to find a follow-up label never came into fruition. All news of Not of This World and the film Meeks was writing ceased. Shortly thereafter, news of Purple's release stopped, and Meeks continued to perform solo shows. In 2005, Meeks agreed to be the topic of the A&E documentary, Intervention which revealed how worsening Meeks' meth addiction had become since 2002. In 2007, Meeks claimed to be sober and prepared to release and properly record Purple, but the album never got off the ground. At one point, Meeks attempted to crowdfund the album. However, donations for the album seemingly went nowhere and many disgruntled fans were left without a response or a refund for their donations. Meeks would continue to tour as much as possible, but studio work was never put out, and Purple, much like Tantric 3 from his former bandmates, was unreleased to the world. In 2010, former Alice in Chains bassist Mike Starr joined Days of the New as an official member and was to record with Meeks. However, this was tragically cut short by the untimely death of Starr, who died via overdose from a mixture of prescription drugs. Meeks would gradually fade from touring until 2014, when against all odds, a Days of the New reunion tour was announced. 
This would feature the original lineup of Days of the New with Todd Whitener, Jesse Vest, and Matt Tall performing with Meeks for the first time in 17 years. The tour titled Full Circle would soon commence, with original material to be released later in the year. However, the underlying prevalent issue of Meeks' meth addiction ultimately put a stop to the reunion, with Days of the New breaking up on stage during a show where Meeks was too intoxicated to perform. Meeks performed a couple more shows with the new band before being arrested for drug possession. Since this arrest, Meeks has spent the remainder of the 2010s and early 2020s either in rehab or in jail, his most recent performance being a solo show in 2018. With the rumored rehab stint completed, it is unknown what will become of Travis Meeks or what his current plans are at this time. One of my favorite aspects of Days of the New was their duality. Days of the New is the best identifiable missing link between the grunge bands of the early 90s such as Alice in Chains and Stone Temple Pilots to the post-grunge bands of the later 90s, such as Creed and Fuel. This can be best displayed by the fact that Days of the New expressed the traits, which made post-grunge so widespread as a genre, while simultaneously releasing music that was thought-provoking, interesting, and unique. Or to put it bluntly, Days of the New possessed post-grunge's ability for commercial appeal, while at the same time maintained grunge's integrity. Even Red, which was remixed to be more commercially accessible, still sounds much more akin to art rock, as opposed to what was popular amidst the masses at the time. However, when it comes to falling short or unfulfilled potential, it's best to take the glass half full approach. When I listen to Travis Meeks, I do feel melancholy for all that could have been, but I also feel appreciation for all that was. I do not see a hopeless, washed up meth addict with no prospect for a happy future, but rather a vibrant, creative spirit who took the acoustic guitar to places it's never been before. This is how I choose to remember Days of the New.